Hi everyone. This time we are going to talk about capsule network with EM routing. In the part part one, we already know that what is a capsule network, and the capsule network basically is a group of neurons, and its in its output is a vector, and it takes vector in and output another vector. We call all of these vectors our activity vector. So in the original capsule network paper, they talk about the vectors are representing the entity parts,、uh, which means that you see the same colors vectors and represents、uh, another object parts. Then you with、uh, with the v1 and v2, then you have the The same enti、uh, another entity. For example, this is a house.、Uh, if you can imagine that, and the original paper says、uh, we want to achieve the equal variance. So, which means the object uh, rotated uh, somehow, and they still the same object, but、uh, you should use the different vector to represent the different、uh, different. Uh, uh, rotations, for example, they are mirror with some、um, with a line, right? Okay. So in the in this new paper, the matrix capsule, what what's the idea differ from the、uh, original capsule network paper? So in the original capsule paper, we use vector in and vector out. Well, it's a it's a common idea.、Uh, it's a you can represent the Vect、uh, by the matrix. That's how. That's why this paper comes out. And the activity vector was、uh, representing the pose of the of the entity parts. And once you replace the vector by the matrix, and then you have to use a matrix uh, and uh, activity probability.、Uh, As we talked before, that、uh, the the norm of the activity vector or the length of the activity vector represents the existence of the object. However, once you rep、uh, replace the vector by the matrix, then you don't have this kind of property here, because you, well, you can define the norm of the matrix, but、uh, obviously, then it, you are kind of rely on the Matrix itself, but you can de you can separate them these two kind of property from the activity vector, which means you have a matrix to represent the pose, and you have another value called activity prob pr、uh, activity probability to represent the ex to represent the existence. So in the original capsule paper, then you have the vector in and. Transformed by the weight matrix, which is the only parameter stored in the、uh, network, and then inside the capsule, and you have the a fine transformed version of the vector input, and then each of the a fine transformed vectors u one and u two has their own agreement. You can imagine that this is a kind of processing of voting, for example. We are voting people to be a president, and then in without their pre,、uh, without without their presentation, we don't believe anyone else, and we we could assume that everyone who votes the people to be a president share the same agreement, right? So originally we initialize the agreement of all the vectors. To be zero, which means、uh, we we share the same agreement here, and then we use softmax to calculate the c value here, and then to doing something like the scorching function to、uh, shrink the、uh, sum of those uh, activ uh, activity transform the activity vector u one u two, and、um, to shrink their lengths to、uh, between zero and one. And then with a one, you can apply this kind of、uh, dot production for the vectors to calculate another agreement for the c one, c one two, c one, c two two, and then you can do this、uh, process again, and then you get a two to be the output if t equals two here.
Okay, this is the routing mechanism by the original paper. However, if you uh, uh, okay, so here is a uh, an a quote that the length of the vector to be the exact confidence of existence. Well, we discussed it before. And if you have the matrix capsule, then the routing mechanism should be somehow different, which is this paper that proposed the EM routing mechanism. And then in the blueprint of the capsule network here, and you, the paper assumed that the activity vector to be two different objects, which is the 4x4 pose matrix and an activation, which is the confidence of the pose uh, of the pose matrix or the pose object and then you might be asked uh, why the pose matrix should be 4 by 4 instead of 16 uh, by 1 uh, vector which uh, this is because of the weight matrix uh, because if you have a 16 by 1 matrix then the weight matrix should be 16 by 16 right but yeah, once you have the 4 by 4 matrix, then the weight matrix should be smaller than the 60 by 60 matrix, which you only need 4 by 4 matrix. Then somehow you use the pose matrix can shrink the number of the parameters to be stored here. Okay, so compared to the original capsule network blueprint then you can saw here uh, you can saw here then you affine transformed the vector in uh, into the capsule neuron and you got the vote matrix that uh, the pose matrix transformed by the weight matrix and then to be a vote matrix and activation can also be transformed here uh, and then Combine all this low-level capsule input and inside a high-level capsule, uh, high-level capsule neuron, then you can somehow processing whatever the routing mechanism here, and you you can get an output here, then another pulse matrix and activation. So to understanding what's the routing mechanism inside this. Uh, inside this black box, uh, and you can uh, in the uh, EM routing, then it's basically the uh, it's basically the clustering algorithm of Gaussian mixture model here. So you can consider that every pose matrix is a data point, and then the routing mechanism is uh, a clustering. Then through this clustering process. Then you got the center of the cluster and the center of the nut cluster. So then the pulse matrix is basically the kind of like this stuff. So I don't want to discuss the EM algorithm here in detail by formulas, but basically you can understand in the routing mechanism it looks like this way. Okay, let's discuss what's the matrix capsule architecture here in this paper. So in this paper, I don't really want to discuss the architecture in detail, but there is a tensor version. You can can help you to understand what the, what basically the capsule, the matrix capsule architecture works. So you have a image input, and then you have a normal convolutional layer. Then through this, you can analyze yourself. Uh, for example, here, uh, what's the filter size? Of course. So 32 to 14, then the filter size should be 5 by 5 filters, right? And then the channels should be equal to the output channel, so which means you apply 32 channels here, right? This is um, common knowledge in convolutional layer, uh, convolutional neural network, okay? So what this paper did difference is uh, the primary caps, uh, there are two branchings from, through the um, through the original and um, through the first layer of the convolutional layer. Then it creates two different branches and merges them and merge them and pass it to the 
to prepare the capsule and to prepare the capsules and to for the next layer. And in the com in the column capsules, it basically combines the convolutional operation and the capsule uh, capsules uh, in in this layer. But you can this you can read the paper yourself. Basically, the operation is like this: the tensors, how the tensors looks like, and and in the last layer, and you have the uh, classes capsules, and you can. Uh, ten different caps, uh, capsules, uh, uh, capsules to uh, do the prediction. Okay, so let's discuss um, what did the paper doing in the for the experiment. Uh, the paper uh, for um, especially for the matrix capsule. It the the, uh, the original idea for the capsules is bring the equal variance here. So the paper wants to prove that the capsule network indeed. Uh, learned some equal variance, so they chose they chose the small uh, small knob and uh, this uh, this data set you can look like uh, for the same so for the same uh, same class for example the uh, the airplane here then they have different shapes but if you use the uh, or normal convolutional uh, Network, then you will lose the shape information here because you have the pooling layer, many many pooling layers, and you basically losing the uh, equivalence information here. Okay, so in this paper, they did uh, they did uh, they use the pose matrix here, and here is the table for the comparison. For example, you use the pose structure, where uh, whether the vector or matrix we discussed before. And then the loss they use uh, the margin or spread margin uh, loss or margin loss, and th this is uh, just a loss function, which is uh, inspired by the uh, support vector machine for the multi class uh, classification. And I don't want to discuss the loss function formula here detailly. You can read the paper, but basically you can understand in the. It's just a loss function, okay? So the coordinator addition, which uh, is the mechanism to combine the to combine the convolutional operation and the capsule here, and you can read paper what exactly here it is, but it's not that much important here, okay? So in their results, you can see here uh, it's a one point eight percent test error rate. Uh, you can see it so here, and they summary uh, summary the sum uh, summary the the result here then the they creating a they created a baseline uh, convolutional neural network with four million parameters and the error rate uh, is five point two and their best model and has improved this result by the multi corps during the test and they have the best result is 1.4%. So in the third row here, then you can see the routing iteration should be 3, then we will discuss why uh, 3 here. And then, okay, you can see there is a uh, kind of like the very significant improvement, but uh, I read some open source implementation, and here is a very famous uh, open source implementation, uh, and then they claim that uh, that they use the same exactly the same architecture here through this paper, and they are saying baseline only got eighty eight percent. And the matrix capsule with EM routing, and, and they only get 91%, 92%, almost 92%. This is a really, really huge, uh, huge gap here between the or the paper, the uh, the, the results claimed by the paper and uh, of open source implementation. Then. Since the author didn't open source their code, then we are. Uh, Actually, I'm I'm also very interested in how the paper creating their result here. Okay. 
Okay, then let's uh, discuss the what, what kind of uh, routing iteration here. Then. And you see it's through the just routing, just iterate once uh, in the routing mechanism, then you see the classification doesn't, mm, the clustering doesn't work well, very well. But through the second iteration, then you can see that the vectors come converged to the chunks. Uh, or the cars. Let's see. You see the difference here. Then, for example, here it's an animal or a human, and then the airplanes uh, or the cars. You see that uh, you you can check the difference here. So what the paper says is, if you want to use routing mechanism, then the op obviously the um, the iteration of the routing should be larger than two. So in their paper. Uh, in the pa in their paper, they tested with the uh, routing with three with, to be the best. And if you uh, in if you increasing the routing iteration, then you will see the test error increases. Okay. And another uh, experiment about adverse as adverse uh, area uh, robustness in this paper, they tested with the adverse area examples and what is uh, adverse area adverse area examples uh, you can check this paper it basically says you have a uh, original original images and classified by the can uh, as a panda then you add a uh, epsilon perturbation and then add another random pixels to in, uh, for influence in this image and then it will make the prediction just um, collapse. Okay, so uh, this paper is proposed by the good fellow, which is a person very famous, and this two kind of uh, method is for creating the adverse area example, and then for the matrix capsule, they said uh, they talked about that uh, with. The BIM and FGSM method it collapses uh, with the epsilon. You see the epsilon. If you increase the random pixels here, then it collapses the accuracy here. However, if you apply this uh, two method to the ma cap matrix capsule network, then you will see that it kind of robustness because the accuracy doesn't collapse. So it somehow proves that the capsule network uh, learns the equivalence and learns the true knowledge here, but not uh, just tricking something. Okay, and here is another same. It discussed the successful rate, success success rate. Okay, so let's sum up the matrix capsule here. So in the the key point of the matrix capsule is. Uh, the matrix and activation tubes to the matrix and activation, which is differ from the vector to vector, okay. And the entity uh, is en encapsulated by the matrix and activation, and it's en encapsulated entity or its pattern, and routing by agreement mechanism. So basically it's a clustering and you can replace the clustering by any uh, any different clustering algorithm. So uh, in another word, how many clustering algorithm you have and how many different version capsule network you have. Okay, so you can create a different version of the capsule network by replacing the routing mechanism. Okay, and there are many many things we didn't talk about. For example, the exactly formula for the EM routing, and well, you can read the paper. This is for the I I just want this talk and then help you understand what the matrix capsule is, and for the pros for the advantages of the matrix capsule, and you already saw the experiment. They brings the equivalence and it brings the interpretability and uh, yes they have the adverse area uh, robustness uh, for the adverse areas examples and it 
kind of robustness, surprising, right? Uh, but for the cons, for the disadvantages here, then you will see the reproducibility is really, really hard. And you, uh, I already show you that the 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 results here by the uh, open source implementation. Then you see uh, reproducibility is difficult to 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 see. Okay, and another. Uh, another disadvantage here is the computational performance, and you can check the blueprint here and the routing mechanism. For example, let's check the uh, original one. The computational performance here, and you see the C is dynamically determined by the routing mechanism, which means. You can't update the C value by the back propagation, which means you can consider the entire capsule as a normal neuron, and then the the gradient back propagates and just skip the entire routing mechanism and to the next uh, to the follow uh, to the before uh, to the next layer here. Then the only the only parameter stored is just the, the affine transform W here. So, which means in every prediction, so in every feed forward prediction, then you have to perform the dynamic routing algorithm here every time for every capsules. So, if you have a, for example, a, a thousand, uh, a thousand capsules, then you have to apply the a thousand dynamic routing mechanism here. Uh, in parallel, which is uh, really really com computational consuming, so the com the computational performance is not really good, and the routing process is not really good because uh, in uh, in this example in the EM routing mechanism here, uh, the EM routing is uh, using the L two norm for the clustering, but if you check the original kind of dynamic routing mechanism, then it's basically the k-means, which means you can apply any kind of norm here, but in the EM routing, then you can only L2 norm here. It's uh, constraints. Okay. So, okay, that's um, basically everything about the matrix capsule network. I hope you enjoy this video, and see you next time.